You're watching Drake Queen Gaming. Enjoy the video. Hey guys, Nary here from Drake Queen Gaming. So if you're new on Twitter, the Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming back at you another Let's Play episode of Violet Memoir, and here's hoping this time I don't get hit with another copyright claim because of the uh, music cover. Uh, I really hope not. I don't want to have to redo the video again. But anyway, guys, let's let's go ahead and just jump right back into it. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, I know what you guys came for. Um, let me lower the music. Vine, but there we go. All right, all right. All right, here we go. All right, alarm senior up. Oh, let's do this. All right, all right, sure. Let's do that. Holding out the paper in front of me, it takes more effort than I've ever done studying to focus on this single page. How am I supposed to focus with a shirtless guy with a body that make Adonis flustered press right up against me? Just relax. This means nothing. As if reading my thoughts, Oscar lifts one of his arms up and rests it on the top of my knee, rubbing it in circles. Its slow, repetitive motion is actually char is actually calming. The texture of his short fur against mine is like a comb running through, and his claws need the soft tissue around my kneecap. Y you're so warm. It causes him to laugh that hearty chuckle. His chest rumbling sends his chest rumbling sending vibrations through my spine. It's like electricity tingling through my body. That's my job, living heater. Now let's get to reading so I can get you out of here. Right, reading. Yeah. Pulling up the page again, the familiar handwriting finally forms words I can recognize. Mom. Mom, guess what? Conrad and I just had our date, and he's super weird, but in, like, a good way. He took me out to this cute little student bar. It's a restaurant, too. We didn't drink, so don't focus on that part. It's designed out like a modern saloon. All western and stuff. They had all these recipes, too. The moment my eyes scan over the paragraph, they widen, and I let out a gasp that causes Oscar to lean over to assess if I'm okay. Th this is the missing entry! Huh? The diary! It, it had the mo most of an entry missing. A page had been ripped out, and I only caught the end of it. I'm missing diary entry in the middle of this abandoned hospital. I don't know, man. It seems a little weird. Maybe it ended up here like we did. Seems like Ellen's dealer gave us some real, some real strong stuff. I don't think we got wasted or drugged, and we're taken here. No need to be ashamed about having a good time. We're in college. Sighing, I return my focus to the paper. Oscar's sheepish grin barely in my peripheral view. Damn it! It's impossible to stay annoyed at him with his handsome smile. It's unfair. I'm only pushing your buttons. I doubt we got drunk enough to get here. Lee would kick my ass before I got you to drink. So you believe me that something weird's going on? Sure, but I don't think we should try to worry about that. No need to stress on that kind of stuff when we got this situation going on. He's right about that. Let's just read this and get back to finding the others and a way out. It felt like a little piece of home. I know I should probably be insulted by the stereotyping, but I couldn't be mad when they made homemade pecan pie. It tasted just like yours and felt like Christmas all over again. Apparently he wanted to take me somewhere that would remind me of home. He's so thoughtful. I'd never guessed he was a jock if he wasn't such a hunk. <clears throat> hey, keep in mind, Dr. Steve Brule doesn't like hunks. He's just a stupid hunk. He's so strange. He never really made any moves on me, but not because he, was in, he wasn't interested. It's hard to explain. He always asked me stuff and seemed genuinely interested, but he never really flirted with me. According to Quinn, this is his first date, and he's a virgin. It must, been, it must have been nerves or something, but maybe he's just that sweet. He didn't even mind that Mercy tagged along with us. He actually seemed relieved. Definitely some nerves going on there. I thought they were going to get along great, but he was so nice to her, but she kept giving him the cold shoulder. She definitely doesn't like him. I'm not really sure why. They went to the ladies' room. Ay, ay, ay. They went to the ladies' room. I asked her what's wrong, but she only blew me off. I don't know what's gotten into her. She left early while I freshened up, but when I got back, I knew she, I knew she said something to him. He looked embarrassed by something, but God, I didn't know something that hot could look so cute. So, Mom, don't judge me for this, but when we were leaving, I dropped a few hints, and he should come back to my place. Don't worry, we didn't do anything. He didn't even come back. I don't think he picked up on them, but he looked real nervous talking to, uh, taking us to my place. When we left, Mercy gave him this look, and I swear for a moment he looked guilty. Then it just cuts off right there. It's the bottom of the page, and there's nothing else uh, nothing else to go with it. That must lead into the entry I saw. God, I wish I had the diary right now so I could just read to the end of this again. What a little bottom. How cute. What? A Conrad guy. He's on the football team, but, I, but he acts like a shy high school girl. Definitely a bottom. You think he's into guys? Here I'm reading a diary entry, and Oscar's like, That dude's a bottom. Oh, I love you, Oscar. Stay in character, man. Eh, we always appreciate it. Definitely. 
I'm not even able to get him to explain why he thinks that as something freezing touches the tip of my tail. I nearly slam my head into his jaw, but he's able to hold me steady. What's wrong? Something touched my tail! Leaning forward, I can see it's just water. It's water? But the water shouldn't be high enough to touch my tail. Oscar? Oscar! What? No need to shout, man. Oscar, the water's rising! What? Oscar looks concerned and confused, but this is the first time since we've gotten here that he's sounded truly shocked and even a little frightened. He leans the two of us forward, and I'm able to see that the water has risen nearly to the nearly up to the bottom of the seats. Fuck! Okay, we're getting up! With only that as a warning, he stands up for a moment. I'm terrified I'm going to fall into the freezing water, but his grip on me doesn't falter, and he lowers me down onto the floor. Sitting up, the water is just underneath my knees. I'm quickly rising. Where's it coming from? Shit! Okay, you got the key? Yeah, right here. Let's try it on that door down the hallway. Okay. Oscar darts towards the door, but when I try to follow him, my pace is much slower. I didn't realize that walking through water like this is so hard. He notices how much I'm struggling and comes back to pick me up. This time with no quips or cute posturing. It's not the time for that. Your fur is too long. There's too much drag. I'll carry you there. He doesn't even wait for a response as he rushes through the doorway we investigated earlier. Even with the resistance of the water, he darts down the hallway with more speed than I'm pretty sure I've ran in my whole life. Making it to the door, he seems to consider something before lowering me to the ground. It's a lot less gentle this time, and the water is already halfway up my thigh. Were there any open windows? The, the place can't just fill up all the way with water, right? It it'll escape somewhere or shatter the windows or something, right? Wallace, focus! The door! His tone isn't harsh, but it's loud enough to pierce through my thoughts. Shaking away any thoughts, any thoughts other than getting out of here, I shove the key into the lock. Or I try a couple times before it finally hits me. The key doesn't fit. It's not for this door. It's not the right key! Fuck! Okay, we're going back to where you came. I'll bend those bars if I have to. He doesn't give me a second. He doesn't give me a chance to respond as he picks me up again and dashes back the way he came. The hallway's a blur, and I'm not sure if it's his speed or if I'm beginning to panic. The shoving, to the, shoving the door to the emergency room opened with his shoulder. Oscar's not even stopping all despite the water nearly reaching his hips. I can see the muscles in his legs through his damp fur. The way he pushes through the water looks like it takes a lot of strength. He's not even panting, but the tension in his muscles shows me this isn't easy either. Ooh, excuse me, when he stops next, I look ahead of us and my stomach drops through the floor. The, stair the stairwell leading back the way we came is completely flooded. You can't even take a step down without dipping into the water. I it's just a water tunnel now. Then Oscar does something that I can't believe. He begins to descend the stairs into the water. W what are you doing? You're getting us out of here. N no, 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 we can't go this way. There's no air. It's flooded. I can see that. Don't worry. You know I swim all day. I'll just get through there, no problem. When we walked through that hallway, it took us several minutes. It's a long hallway. You might be able to hold your breath for a long time, but I'll drown. Hell's walking slow. Trudging through water takes a bit. Plus, I wanted to make your ride more comfortable. I'm faster in water. You won't even be able to count to ten. He gives me a grin and wink, but it's no comfort. The sound of rushing water around us is suffocating, but at least there's the ability to breathe here. Oscar! Look, Wallace. There's no other way out. The door is locked. This is the only way out. You gotta trust me here. I promise. I won't let anything happen to you. He lifts up one hand and gently cups my face. There's none of his usual implications, it's just purely for my reassurance. Breathing slowly, I let myself focus on the touch and calm down. There's no time for me to panic or mull over my choices. I have to make a decision now. I... I... Ah! Ah, game! What are you doing to me? Ah, game. Game, game, game. What are you doing? Uh... Alright, let me pause it right here. Okay, um, I go through the water-filled hallway. I trust Oscar. I trust him. But is this really Oscar? That is my question. It seems to be. I'll trust him. Okay, I, I trust you. We'll go through the hallway. As soon as the words left my mouth, Oscar's features lit up in a way I've never seen before. I've seen him happy, sure, but right now he's glowing and his smirk looks almost predatory. He's got something to prove, but I'm not sh even sure it's to me. He definitely wants to show off, though. That much is clear. Don't worry, dude. He'll be over in the blink of an eye. Then we can find somewhere else to go. Maybe I'll even put those bars for you. I'm not sure you could even pull that off. Just watch me. Don't hurt your... Whoa! Without any hesitation, he tosses me into the deepest part of the water, plunging me inside. It takes me a couple seconds of thrashing about, but I'm able to stabilize myself. Oscar's just looking down at me with a smile on his face. There's amusement in his face, so there's a sternness in his eyes that shows he understands the severity of the situation. Your form is awful. I'm definitely going to have to take you to the pools. You look like a baby duck in there. It's very cute. Is it really the time for this? I try to keep my voice firm, but I can feel the embarrassment burning the back of my neck. I've never been the best at swimming, but I'm not bad. No one could, would be calm in this situation. <laughs> it, isn't help, 
it isn't, it isn't, it isn't, but it's helping, right? It'll keep you cool, and you can rely on me. He follows me in, though. Follow is a very generous term. Even when he reaches me, he's still able to stand with the water only reaching halfway up his chest. That smile he's always wearing is there as he reaches out and guides me close to him, allowing me to secure myself to him. I told you that I'd come to save you, right? And we swim away together, so you, are you ready? I'm not sure, I'm not sure I can't, I, I can't make that. Just grab on. He pulls me behind him and wraps my arms around his neck, locking them together in the middle. I can feel the heat of his body against my chest despite the freezing cold water. Are you sure I should be grabbing your neck like this? Trust me, you wouldn't choke if you tried it with your little twink arms. You're fine, dude. Grab on tight as you can. This is going to be fast. Okay, I, I trust you. I, I trust you. It sounds more like I'm convincing myself, but there's no turning back now, so I wrap myself around his neck as tight as I can. His shoulders tense up and my grip loosens. It's okay, man. Really, grab on tight. I can handle it. I got it. As soon as Oscar begins to shift, I brace myself, clenching my eyes shut and closing my breath. Even though I'm, even though it's, I'm still above water, I can feel adrenaline running through me, causing me to shake. Oh, come on, you guys. With a single motion so smooth, I almost didn't believe it happened. Oscar dives forward and thrusts us into the dark depths below. As the water rushes over me, it's a cold sense of relief from the heat coming from my rapidly beating heart, but that only lasts a moment before the freezing chill sets in. I expect the rush to taper down to a calming flow, but I'm surprised when the pressure never lets up. I have to feel my muzzle pressed against the back of his neck to stop the water from flooding into my nose. Building up the confidence to open my eyes, I'm forced to look back to the side to stop the surging water from crushing my eyes. It takes a second for my eyes to adjust to the darkness, but when I'm finally able to interpret a blurry image, I'm able to see just as fast as we're going. It's almost breathtaking, watching this long corridor whiz by me, and initially, that initially intimidating strong flow of water is actually soothing now. It's like I'm in a super high pressure shower or spa. Without the dread overshadowing everything else, I can finally feel Oscar against me. Pressed up against his back, I can feel his arms moving. There's power in them as he moves with an elegance and finesse you'd never expect from someone as huge as him. But I know better than that. I've seen the way he moves. He's like a mermaid slicing through the water as if it's as easy as dancing. I can't see his face, but it's probably too dark to make any details, but I can tell he's smiling. It's not a hard guess with Oscar, but there's an aura of pride about him like he's proving himself. There's no reason he needs to prove anything to me. I'm not someone special. But I'm, I'm not allowed to be alone with my thoughts long before Oscar brings my attention back to him. When he dives and bobs in the water, the rush of bubbles against my face makes me smile. That's when I catch him moving his head to look back at me. I'm only able to see one eye, but his wide smile is still visible as it stretches all the way to his ears. That moment when our eyes meet is full of reprise from this stressful from this stressful place. It's calm and serene, but that playful light in his eyes quickly dims, and I swear the water gets colder despite Oscar's high temperature. There's something sad in his eyes, but before I can even study it, he turns back and picks his, picks up his pace. No wonder Oscar's on the swim team. He's, I'm barely able to hang on to him. It doesn't even feel like he's straining himself too much. I bet if he went all out, I'd be blown away. But then he slows down. It's still a brisk pace, and, but, and now I'm certain Oscar could make the trip even without coming close. He's closer to a torpedo than a person. But there's something methodical about this change of flow, something significant that I'm not being let into. Pulling on Oscar's neck, I push my face next to his. His powerful shoulders are moving against my stomach, and the raw power of them would be terrifying on, anything else, on anyone else. With his closer view, I can see his face easily, and his expression is such a stark difference from the energetic look he always has. He's got a significantly smaller grin on his face, barely noticeable compared to his usual overindulgence, but there's a sense of intimacy here between us. He's staring off into the distance again like he did at the pool while he's thinking about some place far away from here. Or some time. It's not particularly sad or upset. In fact, he looks almost peaceful, and if lacking that wonderful Oscar energy he normally exudes. When he finally looks over towards me, I can see those striking ocean eyes of his as they, as they stare into my own. I expect him to discard it like before, pushing it all away into a smile. But he doesn't. He just looks forward and keeps swimming. Something does change, however. It's small, but no, it's noticeable. He begins to bob back and forth as he swims like he's following the rhythm of music or playing with someone. It makes me feel like I'm intruding on something personal. But that when I see Oscar looking at me again and his smile is there, but there's a bittersweet edge to it. There's no resentment, in fact. It feels like he's inviting me into his little bubble. It's an emotional side to this otter that I've never seen before. Is that what swimming is to Oscar? The place where he's able to express these kinds of emotions? Regardless of what it is, he's letting me see this. I don't think he'll want to talk about it. I'm not sure if there's even words for it. It's more like a feeling between the two of us. 
a moment of peace after these last hours of hell. So I closed my eyes and let my head rest against his shoulder, ignoring the small sparks of fire in, his lung, in my lungs. Before the fire can turn into a burning inferno, Oscar pulls up and both of our heads are thrust out of the water. Oscar walks up the steps, slowly bringing us out of the water. He's lightly panting and he looks satisfied like he just did a light workout. Despite the speed and length he just swam, he doesn't look phased at all, only taking his time to make sure I'm alright. If this is nothing, I'm terrified of his usual workout routine. Heh, <laughs> doing good there, man? Sorry I slowed down at the end. If that's slow, how fast are you when you're going all out? I'll have to show off for you sometime. Maybe I can race sell one at the pool, show you when I'm on the travel team. He takes a step, but I barely manage to croak out my voice before we get fully out of the water. Wait, can you put me down? I can walk by myself. Are you sure, dude? I don't mind carrying you. You're real light, and you can see that I'm not lacking in any department. Pretty sure I could bench press ten of you. It's fine. I just feel... I just... Uh, I just feel... Uh, blah. I would just feel more comfortable on the ground. Alright, I'll let you down, man, but be careful not to slip. We just went through water pretty fast. If you get lightheaded, just let me know. Without another word of protest, he turns around and crouches back down into the water, giving me easy access to the rising steps behind him. I'm finally on the ground, and it's a little disorienting after torpedoing through the water. It takes a genuine effort to not sway as, as I reach back up to the flat ground. Hey, w Wallace? His tone strikes me as different from usual. It's serious and completely devoid of any jokes or playfulness, jolting my fog-addled mind awake. He yeah? He only turns his head back, giving me a view of those shimmering eyes as they stare directly into my own. They completely steal any attention away from all his other features, even his signature smile or distinctive body. Guys, I'm going to uh, lower this a bit more. Because I'm thinking this might be a piano cover. I God, I hope I don't get hit again. Jesus. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Thanks for trusting me back there, man. I wouldn't have blamed you for not doing it. It's a big risk, but I'm glad you did. That brings my own smile back to my face, and I know he catches it when he flicks his tail to pat me on the butt, pushing me forward to come stand next to him. Now, let me keep my other promise and get you out of here. We only take a couple steps before I see the double door across from the stairwell again, and remember this door has been locked too. Wait, locked? Uh, Oscar! My voice comes out as a shout, startling the, starting the large otter and who recoiled in an overdramatic act of fright. What? That door! It, it had a keyhole! Maybe that key works on it! Do you still have it? Wait, do I? Bearing my, he bearing my hands into my pockets, with each one empty or filled with other items, I can't help but feel my enthusiasm shrivel. Until I found them in my right pants pocket underneath that missing diary entry, now ruined by the water. But that's not an urgent problem at the moment. Pulling out the key, I fumble for a moment, my hands shaking both from the cold and adrenaline rush I'm still going through. Before I can drop it, Oscar covers my hands with his own. The warmth is a stark contrast to just how, I how cold I feel. Hey, Wallace, calm down, man. It's okay. The water's not rising over here. Look down. He's right. When I look down, the water's only at my ankles, like it had been before. I guess the flooding is over at the is over on that side. Does that even make sense? It doesn't matter. There's too much weird stuff going on to get caught up on the details. I think I'm still buzzed up. I need to calm myself down. Focusing on the warm cocoon covering my hands, I imagine the heat flowing through my arms. It's not realistic, but my arms feel warmer even if it's not real. And wow, I didn't realize how big Oscar's hands really were. I knew they were big, but I'm pretty sure he could cover both my hands with just one of his. I'm pretty sure there's better things to look at than my hands. They're just so huge, you could crush my hands if you wanted. It causes him to put a puff out his chest. He looks like he's preening himself. Surprisingly, it comes off as more, as more fun and kind of cute instead of obnoxious. <laughs> you know what they say about... He cuts himself off when he notices my rolling eyes, flashing me a smile before he pulling his hands away. Cautious isn't a word I'd use to describe Oscar, but he's taking care to see if I'm still shaken up over what happened. There's still a cold stone in my stomach, and I can feel an anxious tightening of my muscles, but Oscar's presence has definitely helped, even a little. With a significantly less shaking and fumbling, I'm able to lift the key up for both of us to see. It looks like the same as when I pulled it out of the box earlier. Not that I expected it to be different, but it's reassurance that I didn't mess everything up. Stepping aside, Oscar gives a bow that's completely ruined by the smug grin covering his face. Even when he's trying to act like a gentleman, he still can't help himself. Walking up to the door, there's an ominous feeling to it, and not just because of what may lie on the other side. What if it doesn't unlock this? What happens then? Now, Oscar said we'll head back to where I came from and move the bars, but there's no way he can actually do that. It's not like we can go back through the water. The room will be completely flooded by then. Will we just be stuck here? What would... What, what? Earth to Wallace! We won't get anywhere if you just stare at the lock. Huh? 
Come on, less thinking and more doing. Don't freak out about things until something bad actually happens. Does what just happened not qualify as something bad? Oscar, sometimes you're a little too carefree. As if he can read my mind, he gives me a wink and nods his head towards the door. Looks like he's determined to not be phased by anything. I should try to do the same. Pushing the key into the hole, it slots into place, which is already a good sign. With some resistance as I try to turn it, but that only lasts a moment before it loosens and makes a distinct clicking sound. It worked! See? No need to stress. Now let's get out of here. Not waiting around for me to get lost in thought any longer, Oscar shoves the door open and wraps an arm around my waist, dragging me through the door as well. Alright guys, I'm going to go ahead and pause it right here. Ah, this hospital. This is very much like Silent Hill in some parts. Very creepy. Very creepy hospital that's apparently flooding. There's some kind of odd fog in the distance with some kind of figure standing out there looking back at the hospital. It's very, very fucking creepy. Ah, at least we got some good people in the hospital with us. It's good to know that Wallace isn't the only one who got dragged into this hell. But anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell. Leave a super thanks if you can. It always helps. Until the next video, I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye!